Hey, what's up? It's me again. Guess who? Doc. That's right. SampleKings.com. And my last video was kind of cool. And I want to see people actually grasp it. So check this out. I got something new. Now I'm going to take the same sample. I'm going to use warping and time stretching and show you that one is better than the other and let you hear why. Also, I'm going to chop stuff out and play the choruses back. Then I'm going to also make sure I got three parts. I'm going to double one part somewhere. I got some tricks. Just a few. I'm going to show you and you will learn. So check this out. Time stretching and warping within voices. So now we want to look at this one vocal. This vocal I have is right here. Me, but I was up. It was all kind of hard to resist. Who living like living like yeah. Who living like And it continues on again. Yeah. Me, but I was up. This can be it hard sometimes. Kind of hard to resist. Who living like living like yeah. Who living like living like yeah. Ooh, That's a pretty long sample, so I gotta make sure I do this correct. So. I want to first let you hear that, then hear it with the music. Now, that's with the music. Now, what I want to do is take this one sample and I have no other singer here right now. You got an idea, you're sitting at home, you want to do something. Oh, I also do lessons, as you already know, so you can go to the website and get lessons too on this. And what I want to do essentially is try to have some fun and create a duet. So what I do is I'll go here to menu, then I go back to right here, which is program, for my drum program. I get here, I'll hit this back. And one more here. It was all kind of hard to resist. Now I'll play them together. Me, but I was up. It was all kind of hard to resist. Who living like living like Now I'm sort of flanging now. And so what I want to do here is I want to make sure these samples are gonna work now. I've got one sample here. Right that sample right there. And I wanna make sure that I can take this sample and Change the pitch. I'll change the pitch a little bit. Let's go change it up a little bit. And then play them at the same time. Now one sample is rushing and one's the simple same tempo. And that we don't want to have happen. So we have to warp. So I'll come to here first and I'll press warp right there. I'll get the second sample. I want to go back to the original pitch, which was zero here, right? And then I want to warp it. Now I warped it. Now I hit this one. Now, I want to change the pitch. Now, one of them is a little bit lower than the other one, so I'll fix it later on. But if I hit them together... But now I'm going to go here and take this one and I'm going to warp it or actually I'm going to take the semitones here. I'm going to go back in five semitones right there. Now I hit both of them. And the last, the length of these samples. Now you can see that when I warp it and then I actually change the pitch or the semitones you can see here, it works. That's kind of cool. So I can also go back to here, we'll say, my menu here. And I would like to probably get one of these pads. It's a little bit loud. And this one, that's lower. That's pad number 10. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to open up the eye. Here's the eye right here. I go to my eye, open the eye up. And I'm on 10. It says A10. And so what I want to do is I'll tap right here. I'll turn my data wheel. 
and turn up some a little bit. Alright, this one. I like that. I want to make it louder than the music a little bit more, so I want to go to the program now. I go right, this is the program now. I'm going to make sure it is. And it goes right there, right? So I think it could be a little bit louder. So I'm going to turn up here a little bit more. And now what I want to do is go back to the original track, which is on one. And I want to mute this track. That pad, actually. Right? So I go back here to pad. That's pad 10. I just muted that pad. So now we're not going to depend on that pad. We're going to depend on the duet. Let's play it from the top. Now that wasn't too bad. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go right back to the original here. Duet track. And I'm going to come in and bring up this... Uh, program up higher right here, right? I want to get a little bit more louder. And as you can see, I've got a little effect on here too as well. And what I did with this effect, I broke out a smooth chorus on this as well. So it smooths out the effect of what's going on. Then I want to go back to here. I go back again. Now I'll play it back. Okay, it's not bad. Now that's when we use time, rather warping. That's when we use um, warping with our samples. Now, what I also did here, we'll come back here and I'm gonna close out the eye here, get a better view of our window. And I'm going to mute this. Go back here to five. Now here in six, I have samples again. Unmute that track. And you'll see here, that's the same sample. But the other sample here, that's time stretched. Now the reason why I do this is because the time stretch to me, and to everyone else who hear this, is the time stretch is more accurate of that vocal as it was. Whenever I warp it out a sample, it's sort of the bass moves a little bit. And you can almost hear it. It's trying to keep everything together. But when I hit this one, everything's there. And this is why a lot of people prefer time stretching. So I use the first part just to get an idea of where the pitch is at. And once I do that, then what I tend to do is I'll time stretch it to fit where I want to make it fit. And then I'll hear it back. So this isn't too bad. And I'll show you that's also in the program so you can see it's real. I'll go to here. I'll select program, edit. And now here in program edit, I'll hit this pad. It's not warped. It's not tuned anyway. I tuned it already in the sample process. Now, as you remember before, I went to five semitones down. Now, if I go here to uh, back in this area here, I want to go to sample edit. What I would do is I would come to here, get the right sample, and then I would use pitch shift. And I would then pitch shift that sample to the tone I thought that was correct, rather than time warping it. When I pitch shift it, it gives me the right, exact same pitch of that sample, and also at the same speed as it would be if it were warped. But I can't change it, but it's great because it matches the first sample. And so let's leave this now. Let's get out of this. Let's press cancel. Let's go back to here. And we're going to go back to our main. So now I have these two samples playing together. 
I want to make sure they are. Yes, they are. And next thing I want to do is I'm going to come back down here. We're going to five. Five is muted. Four is muted. Three is. And we're back to here again. Make sure this is not playing. Yep. The main sample here on pad 10. And now I want to play it back. Now you heard that, that sounds much better because now the first sample is the way it was originally and the second sample where it sounds like a guy when originally it was a girl voice by pitching it down and then time stretching it during that process of time stretching that sample it gives a much more accurate response or actual feel of what that vocal should sound like. Now if you want to get more lessons like this where we do time stretching and warping, let me teach you one-on-one -on -one sessions that's right you and me sitting down a zoom lesson and then we're going to find out how we can help you do what you want to do it's pretty simple you come right here in our samplekings.com website and you get down to here you can see it right here this is our calendar and the rules are right here it's pretty simple you can either get a mixing session or a zoom lesson right pretty easy to do you see my time here is from 7 p.m to 9 a.m that's pretty cool is my phone number right there email address it's all here for you now this sale ends on the 22nd a new sale comes up on the 23rd as the summer ends we're getting right back into regular time it's pretty simple you look on the schedule here you can pick whatever you want because you can be in any time zone you can be in russia you can be in china you can be in the middle of hong kong japan we got clients also in germany clients in denmark i mean it's everywhere all around the world including sweden too as well and we have clients in America, all across the states and in Canada. All you have to do is just book the time. I will set you up. I'll tell you what's available, what isn't available. But you already know from my time schedule, I will make sure we have time for you. It's easy to do. And check it out. We're here to help you. Okay, so that was the duet vocal time stretched. So I want to go now to this next part. We're going to use three-part harmony in this case. Now this is the full vocal chorus. Let's look at this from the program view. I'm going to go to menu, select program, edit. And here you'll see that I have samples here. And these samples are right here. Two, three samples, right? Go back to main here. Let's unmute this stuff. Now we're going to go into menu and then we go right here to program edit now I'll hit this first sample second sample it's all the same samples all the same samples right there which is kind of cool now what I want to do here next is warp them I'll warp, warp, warp. now all three are warped now I want to come to here, the second one. I want to send this one down by about a fifth. And I'll play them together. And we know that's to work for sure. But this other one here has not been done. So I'll come to here and I'll stop that. And what I want to do here with this one here is I'd like to go up. Now if I go up though, you get this freaking sound, which I don't like, which is this kind of like, Chipmunk sound. Like a little kid, but listen to this. So you got that. So that's pretty loud there. But you get the idea that we have three part harmony. Now, sometimes I have to do effects to that kind of idea with the chipmunk sound, but this is just to give me an idea in case I want to tell a singer, I want this pitch, you got this pitch, you got that pitch, and this way, I'm already prepared for the session. And I've also experimented some ideas. So this is kind of cool like this, or like that. And these are all warped, right? But you hear how they sound when they're warped out. They sound a little freaky warped out. But it's okay. So I'll come back to here, right? 
And then I want to go back to my main window here. And then I want to probably check out the adjustments. So I'm going to go over here to my eye. I'm going to bring down probably this right here a little bit more. That's responsible for that. And now I would like to play back with the music. Uh, providing I do something else. I want to come to here and I want to make sure that that sample is quiet. We're just going to hear the full chorus. <laughs> It's not bad. Now what I want to do though is I'm going to come to here and I want to get that pad. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to go back to my chorus. It's full chorus there. And good. We're set for that, but I want to go into here and hit that pad. Now I've got a doubler here. Let me close this out. Get rid of that. That's a double I'm using on that track. So I want to make sure I can bring it down now and make sure it doesn't get too much in the way but still gives me the presence of that third vocal. So I'll go back to here. I'm on that pad. I want to bring this pad down. I click right here, turn my data wheel to bring it down some more and I'll do it while it's playing. Now I'm now it sounds better in the mix. Now what I want to do here is probably hit this 10 pad here and unmute this pad. This is going to be the lead vocal. Those sounds are in the background because remember those sounds are mono. So I'll go right to here. So I successfully made a chorus. This is kind of cool. And that's how I make that chorus work, but that's warping too. So I'm not too sure I want to do the warping thing. So I could actually do time stretch as well. And I did do time stretch, but I did something else. I only want to hear this background chorus in one section. Let's look at this. We're going to go here and we're going to probably stop that, go to here. And we're going to go to my next idea I have here that I came up with is a short chorus. Now this chorus is different. I cut out parts of the chorus, so let's look at this. I want to go here to main, and then I'm gonna go right here to program. And I wanna go to here, you see this one? That's the first vocal. I cut out some sections. I only wanna have two parts play as though there were background singers on them. I got here too, another one, that's the guy vocal. Here, a little girl's vocal. So now what I want to do is show you how that works. I go to here, I go to main, I go back to sample edit. Now what I do, I cut parts out of the sample. And how I do this is I go here to process and I would go into process and we're gonna go up here. Here we go. I can silence any section of a sample. So I may want to say, I want to silence this part here or silence this part here and keep the part in the middle. That's what we did. And as you can see from this little diagram here, this part here where the blue sign is out, that's silent. These other parts will play. And as you can see, when I go back to main and then I select program again, right here, program edit, you can see those samples have been silenced in the middle sections. This is a cool way to actually, if you get a part, you can make up your own courses out of it and have fun doing it too and get an idea of how this would sound. And now once that's done, I'll go back to main here now, and I want to make sure some parts are cut off here. So we got the short chorus. We're going to turn the long chorus off. Go to the short chorus. Make sure everything else is off here. I want to hear the short chorus. I'll press unmute, and I want to go back down to here. I want to check too. So I want to press unmute. I'm going to mute that one actually, and I want to hear this short chorus. Hope this works. And so we're waiting for it to come, and it should. There it is. That works for me because that little high-end voice fits in perfect now without having to say all the words. Oh, 
love that. Now I come to here, I may want to bring it up now. So now I made a little chorus, a three part harmony with a background chorus to support the lead. Now what I want to do is make sure I can go back to my track, first track here, and I want to make sure this is on, and, right, let's do the pad version of this. I'm going to bring this up now. It was okay, hard to resist. Who live and lie, live and lie, yeah. Who live and lie, live and lie, yeah. So I want to make sure the lead vocal is up there tight. The lead vocal also is stereo when I convert the other tracks to mono. And of course, that's pretty simple to do uh, inside your sample edit. So, next thing I'm going to do here is play this back from the top. As you can see it works and this is how you can deal with samples remember warping is kind of weird you'll recognize it once you hear the warping but once you use the warping to find the pitch that works for you then take that same sample and time stretch it and then the next thing you want to do is you want to pitch correct the sample 